Thanks for joining our webinar today on data security training. And this is all about improving your odds to help protect against all the threats that are out there. So thanks for joining us. Our new training sessions are just 20 minutes long. And if you haven't already done so, please go to the ikari.com website, www.ikari.com, and then on the What's New section on the right, click on View Presentation. For call clarity, we've set up these calls as just listen only. It's less interactive than we'd like, uh, but the reason is just to cut down on the ambient noise. If you need to take another call and put, put this call on hold, we won't all hear the music. And uh, if you have any questions, just call us anytime at 978-692-4200, or you can also email us at info at uh, If you get a question during the presentation, we'll try to get it, or we'll follow up with you in the afternoon. So our workshop mission is to help you get more from the technology you already have and to introduce you to new technologies you need to know about. And we focus on helping you use technology to grow your business and we're also trying to help you protect your business. And today, talking about security, we're really talking about protecting your business. The mass data security law, HIPAA, and many other industry regulations actually require ongoing employee training. And that's why we've revamped our training series to help you use these sessions to help train your employees and meet the requirements. Many of you are undergoing security risk assessments right now. Some of these are required by industry standards. If you're going through meaningful use, you'll need to get a security risk assessment by the end of the year. But we strongly advise all businesses to review their security in depth at least annually and quarterly is even better. So security is in the news all the time. You can't open up a paper today or go on the web without reading something about a new, a new breach, a new attack. Target was breached and everybody had to get new credit cards, set up uh, uh, monitoring on the cards. Recently, Home Depot kind of kind of went through the same thing. Uh, keys to the Android phones uncovered. There's, there's a headline just almost daily, it seems. There's also a wave of really bad viruses that are out there. There's a, kind of a new trend called ransomware. So the folks, the bad guys writing these viruses have figured out how to basically monetize the, the harm that they do. And what these viruses do, they'll take your take control of your files and actually encrypt them and then you get a warning message that says hey your files are all encrypted you'll go to open a file and it won't open it will give you some crazy warning then it says your files are encrypted and if you want them back pay five hundred dollars a thousand dollars possibly more there's um, an escalation if you don't respond in a certain amount of time about a year ago there was a wave called crypto locker that came out and these folks were actually caught. There was an international effort, and they caught a Russian hacker around the May-June time frame. And this is right out of, a, I'm a big fan of the TV show 24. This is something right out of that. It's Interpol, FBI working together. Uh, but guess what? All the bad guys figured out, gee, you can actually make a lot of money. The crypto locker folks made millions off of their crimes. And now Crypto Wall is making the rounds. Just It's a variation so you really need to watch out. The ante has been upped on all of these different threats. The question we get all the time is, you know, well, how do I, how do I, I want to be a hundred percent safe. Well, that's not possible. If if you were to take your computer and turn it off, and you disconnect it from the internet, turn it off, lock it up in a safe deposit box at the bank. Yeah, that would be safe, and it would be completely useless to you at that point. But what you can do is improve your odds that you're going to stay safe. And with knowledge and training, you're going to help your whole organization stay safe. And that's the goal. Often what we see is it's really end users that are kind of the weakest link in the equation. Often we see people doing things either out of convenience or because they're trying to be more productive. They're trying to get more work done. So they keep a password that's really short or they don't put in a password when they really should. 
or they're not encrypting when they should. It's, it's end users that are really the culprit in most of the breaches that occur. And that's why training is so important. And these laws that are in one way kind of a pain because everybody has to follow a new law, but they really are for a good purpose. It's to help protect data, help prevent identity theft. And your end users are going to be your weakest link if they're not trained. So one of the first things to think about, and we kind of look at security in layers, is what's the physical security around the devices that you have? So for example, you have your laptop, your computer, you have your smartphone. Uh, number one is encryption. If you were to lose your laptop, uh, forget it in the taxi, uh, you, you walk away at a, at a coffee shop and somebody swipes it, if your laptop's encrypted, then basically it, it's useless. Nobody can get the data off of it. And it, that's actually required. If you have personal information on a portable device, a laptop, USB drive, USB stick, mass data security law says you have to encrypt that. If you, if, and personal information means first initial last name or first, init, first name, last name plus personal identifying information. So that would be a driver's license number, social security number, bank account, credit card number, that kind of thing. Um, also in the healthcare industry, protected health information. So that has to be in encrypted. Also, uh, you know, encryption on your, your smartphones. Nowadays, people keep documents and they have email on their, on their phones. It's, it's kind of a pain every time you go to your phone to have to punch in a code or in the newer iPhones, you can do the, the fingerprint reader. Still, that's critically important. And the newer versions actually encrypt. The older versions of iOS actually just, it's just password protection. And just a little aside on that because it's a question we get a lot. The Windows password on your laptop is, it, it's a layer of protection. It is not the same as encryption. And a lot of times people say, oh, I don't need to encrypt. I'm already all set because I, I have a password on my system. And it's a completely different standard. Password protection on Windows A, there's readily available password crackers. Uh, you can also take the hard drive out of the system, put it in another system. There's lots of ways to read a hard drive. With encryption, basically everything you have is scrambled. And without the en encryption code, it can't be regenerated and used. Another thing to think about is screen lock. Um, if you get up and walk away from your system, can somebody just walk up and let's say you have some confidential information open, uh, they could get right into all your work. So think about the layer of physically controlling access to all your devices. The next thing to think about, next layer, is like what's happening on the device itself. So security patches are coming out all the time. Microsoft has Patch Tuesday, second Tuesday of the month. That's when they put out all their patches. Basically, the way it works is the, the software is incredibly complex, and hackers will identify vulnerabilities, and then the, the software vendors will patch those, kind of patch up those vulnerabilities, and it's a little bit of a cat and mouse game. A new uh, vulnerability is exposed, it's, it's patched, and it kind of just keeps going back and forth. When there's a critical update, that's something that needs to be on your system. That's a, it, generally, that's a known threat that could result in remote control of your system. Antivirus protection needs to be up to date. We also recommend monitoring of all the updates. So in mass data security law, it's any system containing personal information is required to have up-to-date antivirus protection and up-to-date security patches. On um, this next slide, number 13, shows what we're looking for. Um, a lot of times people, you know, if they're under support contract with us, we run what is called in the industry managed service. That means we're looking at a number of different variables on a server and on desktops. And this is just um, some mock, this is like real data that we've changed just to hide the names, et cetera. But um, what we can see is on, on, server should always be on, so the availability should always be green. We can see here, oh, we have one red dot. That means it's not up to date for security updates. It is up to date for critical updates. Um, so that's the most important. Under the desktops, uh, we're looking for things like the security updates, critical updates, third-party patches. That's your 50% of vulnerabilities come from the third-party patches. Like that's the Adobe, Java, etc. 
Um, we also do smart analysis on hard drives that are capable of that. That's predictive failure of hard drive crashes. So, for example, if you have eight or ten people in your small business, how do you know that system number seven is up to date for antivirus updates? That's the kind of thing that we're looking at for you. Um, there's lots of different ways to do it. You can actually go around to each system and check. Uh, but you do need to be responsible for every system. It's, it's those weak links that you want to watch out for. <clears throat> the other thing is uh, looking at antivirus. Um, you know, antivirus protection is kind of out of sight, out of mind. There's stuff happening all the time, and you just you don't know what's happening because your antivirus software, and you know, also your firewall, other layers of protection are protecting you. But this is kind of a behind the scenes again. We just made this um, taking out the real names and just made generic names here, but this is actual data. And you could look at um, infected versus uninfected scans. The antivirus is always finding things and stopping things and kind of setting them aside. There's, most of them are little things, but there's also big things in there as well. Um, you could see <clears throat> on the pie chart on the right, most of the threats are moderate or, or low risk, uh, but there are some higher risk items. And that's, that's going on all the time. Your software is being updated all day long and uh, and the reason for that is because the hackers are working all day long to try to figure out how to get around it. For email, we recommend as a layer of protection to filter all your mail before it gets to your network and that's either if you're using cloud-based email before it gets to your mail server in the cloud uh, or if you have an in-house exchange server. You basically don't want that stuff on your network. You don't want it you don't want to use, the, for example, the junk filter in Outlook. It's already on your system. You don't want it there. Last month, I just looked at the numbers recently. We stopped three quarters of a million spam messages for our customers. Just you stop them in the cloud before they get to systems. And it's really amazing when you look at the numbers. Again, if you're filtering your mail, you're not seeing all this. But about 80% of all mail, 80, 80 to 90% really of all mail worldwide is actually spam. So there's just folks constantly trying to send stuff out. Um, and a lot of them contain phishing attempts or viruses. And these are the, hey, you need to reset your password. And it's not really from uh, Verizon or American Express. It's a fake. Those are known as phishing emails. Also, some of them contain viruses. That's, this is a big way that CryptoLocker got onto systems. I'm going to show you an example of an email that's, you know, slow down before clicking, that's our message. Uh, this is an email that came, I just blacked out a couple of things, but this is one, it, it looks like it came from ADP payroll, but it really didn't. Okay, so on the from, there's a fake ADP payroll. So if you, you know, a lot of small businesses use ADP payroll, this comes in, you're working really fast, it's an ACH notification, although that's not how they word um, the actual emails that do come in. But there's a lot of flags in here if you know what you're looking for. One is this is sent to multiple people, most of which are random. Um, and then there's some misspellings of an email in here. The dates on the sent and the summary activity, they don't match. So that's kind of like, well, gee, that's kind of strange. Um, they also say, hey, download from Dropbox. Well, ADP would never put your confidential payroll records on Dropbox. That's kind of, that's a big warning sign. But then the funny thing on this one is it also, it doesn't even reference Dropbox, it references Cubby. Cubby's the um, Mosey, you know, the competition for Dropbox. It's another file sync and share. There's a lot of them out there. And uh, there's also no signature at the bottom. There's no phone number, no corporate contact information. So this is one uh, that some of them are way more subtle than this, but you can imagine in an organization, let's say an employee, random employee gets the payroll report and they're thinking, gee, I just got the payroll report and no one knows I have it, so I'm going to take a peek. That's how they get you with CryptoLocker. There's a lot of variations like this. There's fake ones from Dun and Bradstreet. Really got to watch out for that. And an another layer of security that we highly recommend is what's known as perimeter security. So if you look at this, this is kind of a really basic network diagram, but you have computers on the network, you have a server, your printer, you have your router with the, the firewall is built in, then you're connected to the internet. What the gateway security does, the perimeter security, 
is in addition to the antivirus that you have on each individual system, so each endpoint should be protected, you also want to have a layer of filtering for just anything that might come onto your network. And this will protect you against if you have, for example, laptops that may come and go off your network. Um, it's just, it's two levels of protection. And it's like having a lock plus a deadbolt plus a locked fence around your house, plus, you know, maybe in a, you're in a gated community. It's, it's layers of protection. And kind of, you know, years back, we'd say, hey, if you have 50 users, you know, we always, we work with small businesses, so our larger sites would be 50, 60 users. This is kind of a no-brainer. You'd want to have this in place. We now pretty much recommend this for everyone, even if you just have a handful of users, um, because there's just so many threats. They're so nasty, and the amount of effort that needs to, clean up after a virus uh, makes it just a, a lot less expensive to put the protection in place in the first place. But it's something that we recommend all businesses consider. The content filtering also, um, you have the, the gateway antivirus is protecting against threats. The content filtering can also manage, for example, things like, gee, I don't want my employees on Facebook half the day. So you can actually block different sites. You can block sites by users. Um, but there's ways that you can control how the endpoints on your network are going to interact with the Internet, and that's something to really think about. And then finally, and we're getting close uh, to the end of the session here, uh, wrapping up real soon, on slide number 18, backup, that's your lifeline. So if you do get hit by a virus, and like we said at the beginning, there's no such thing as 100% protection. If you're, if you're using a computer, you're getting email, you're on the internet, you have a level of risk. You just you want to stack the odds in your favor. Um, but if you do have a threat come through, and unfortunately, this is just like terrorism in the real world. One threat, only one threat needs to come through to do a lot of damage. And in that case, you're going to be relying on your backup to get to basically to restore you to where you were. And what we advise is that you want to look at what you're backing up because sometimes folks will go off, we'll see clients like, oh yeah, I just picked up a new um, laptop at Best Buy and there's data on there. You know, they didn't, you know, if we're setting something up and configure it, we, most, we see what you're doing. Um, you may have stuff that's already in place before we work with you or you may get something new or maybe a vendor, a third-party vendor is going to make a change to one of your business line of business applications, etc. You want to review this on a regular basis and also test the recovery. Often what we see is, you know, maybe a business has a policy, hey, everything important gets stored on the server and the server gets backed up. And you have a rock solid server backup. The problem is people store stuff on the desktop anyway. So you just kind of want to periodically go through and kind of figure out where's my data, what's my most crucial data, um, if, if you're still backing up to tape, that's really a technology that's phased out. Um, tape isn't always recoverable, so you should be moving off of that. Lots and lots of different ways to back up. But the most important thing is if you do file and folder backup, you really need to make sure you're actually capturing everything that you think you're capturing and everything that you need to capture. So always a good idea. And that's when we say, you know, doing that annual review of your security includes looking at that backup. That's what you're going to rely on. So to, to summarize, recommend thinking about security in layers. Your, your physical security around your devices, you know, what happens if a laptop gets lost? When, when an employee walks away from a system, is there a screen lock in place so a random person can't just walk up uh, to the system? Uh, mass data security law, HIPAA rules require that only personnel who, who need access to personal information to do their jobs can have access to that information. So it's a violation of those rules to have an exposed system. So just simple things like screen lockers, encryption on your portable devices. Then you have your endpoint protection, which is your antivirus updates, your security patch updates, and then another layer is your perimeter security. Uh, mass data security law requires a written information security plan. It could be simple, it could be one page, just you know, a series of bullets, but it does have to be written down. And then things to ask yourself, you know, trends these days. Um, bring your own device. Are people connecting to your wireless? Are they bringing in uh, their smartphones and connecting to Dropbox and who knows what else? Uh, bring your own app. 
it's kind of the variation of now each person might have 20 different apps they're running and what are they doing? Can you measure your compliance? Do you actually know if um, the computer in the corner of your office, system number seven, has up-to-date patch, up-to-date security patches, up-to-date antivirus? That's why we recommend managing, doing the managed service. And will your backup really be there for you when you need it? All right, so thanks everyone for joining us today. And if you have any questions, we've got a blog. Uh, we're on Twitter, Facebook, lots of different ways um, you can get information and updates and just call us anytime you have a question. Thank you very much.